I'm glad you're here. Today we're talking about quilting partners. Every time I quilt over someone's blocks and pieces, I'm partnering with them in their creation. And we'll see how I do this by stitching around applique and taking care in setting designs. And one of my favorite partners, Sherry Meineke Johnson, is here. <laughs> and we'll look at the award-winning quilts that we've teamed up to create. And I'll share my best advice for professional quilters to make good partnerships. So stay tuned. Linda's Long Arm Quilting is made possible by Gamel Quilting Machine Company, bringing quality, innovation, and service to quilters around the world for over a quarter of a century. By YLI, making decorative threads that help you unleash your imagination. By Statler Stitcher, providing automation to enhance and expand your long arm quilting business. And by Hobbs Bonded Fibers. We're looking at how quilters and piecers can partner together to complete beautiful quilts. I'll show you how I hold up my end of the partnership with specific quilting techniques and we'll talk about what makes a good professional partnership. But what better way to start than to see a partnership in action? This is Sherry Meineke Johnson, my longtime quilting partner. Sherry used to be one of my customers when I was sewing for the public. I loved quilting for Sherry because she left me wide open spaces for the quilting designs. Our relationship developed because I found out that I really love to design and do applique work, but I'm just not as interested in doing the quilting part. The quilts we do as a team are entered into shows under a two-person category or a group category. When people see these quilts, they always come up and ask me how you come up with these ideas. Well, let's take a look at the quilt. Great idea. I'm normally, I'm very inspired by the fabric, and I usually will choose one fabric, and I will fussy cut. In other words, I will repeat this one wedge over and over again, and that creates this beautiful fan. So you don't cut more than one at a time. You no, cut I cut each individual piece. Each individual piece, one at a time. And then do that. And again, you've left me this wide open space, and the name of this quilt is... Screaming Peacocks, which is um, phenomenal. Of course, we, and the, the Trapunto, I'm so lucky because Sherry cuts all the Trapunto. That's yes, part of her job. Yes, I do. Yes. The one underneath it is uh, one of the later ones that we've done. And this one is Paisley on, on Parade. parade. Mm -hmm. And I love this one because, again, it has these open spaces, circles everywhere. But I've been able to use a lot of different colored threads and uh, really give it the effect that I wanted to get on this quilt. And your design work is so inspiring to me. Well, it's always exciting to Linda to see what you do with the, the quilt top because I have my vision, but then when I give it to you, you just expound, expound on, it. on it. And uh, we don't do any pre-design. People ask us a lot if we do any pre-design work together as a team, and we don't. No, I, no. I do my top, and then you do your quilting. Surprise when I see the top, and surprise when, when the quilt is finished. Exactly. Let's take a look at one of my favorite quilts, Sherry. And mine, too. This one is called Magic Carpet. Do you want to tell them about it? Well, it started, once again, with my technique of one fabric that I was attracted to, which everyone... Which I thought was really an really ugly, ugly fabric. fabric. <laughs> But it did turn out really well, and the same thing, the repeats and then the circles. I'm always attracted to circles, and there were a lot of circles in this fabric. And then um, I appliqued everything on, and then I passed it to you. Oh, and, and this quilt was one of the easiest ones I ever had to design. It just, like, came to me. And, um, and then there's a lot of the crystals on this one. There's 9,104 crystals on this quilt. Whoa, you counted them. I counted them. I That's thought, if I'm going to put this many crystals on, <laughs> I'm going to count them. Um, you know, people are always asking me, you do so many circles, how do you get those perfect circles? Will you show us how that works? Yes, I will. It's quite easy. Terrific. I use file folders for my templates from the Office Supply House. Well, that's cheap. It's very cheap. And I use a craft punch for, from scrap booking. Uh-huh. And you're just going to push this in here, and you're just going to punch... Your perfect and that, circles. Your perfect circle. Oh. And that will give you a perfect circle. Now, also, if you have a 
a circular design that is a different size, uh -huh. there's this little tool here. It's a circle scissor. And it has all these little holes and it will give you different size circles. Oh. So you're just going to position this down here. You put your little, this is just a little um, Zacto. And it goes right in there. Oh, it cuts. And it just, and it will cut oh, out. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and then you get a perfect circle once again. After you get your circle, you're going to cut out your fabric about three-eighths of an inch all the way around the design that you want. And you fussy cut that little. And I fussy cut I this see. little. Okay. Yes. Everything in my technique is about fussy, it's fussy cut. cutting. It's fussy okay. cutting. So I'm going to take it with the wrong side and I'm going to start my needle right here. And I'm just going to rock it back and forth and I'm doing a little running stitch all the way around. And sometimes it takes a couple Depending on the size of the circle. Depending on the size of mm -hmm. the circle. Mm -hmm. Now when I get to the end, I'm going to go one stitch past where I started, and I'm going to end up on the, the right side of the fabric. Okay. And now I'm going to just take my paper template, Okay. position that right inside, and then just draw that stitch up. Boy, that makes a nice flat circle it on the other side. It makes a nice flat, there are no, all the edges are nice and neat and mm -hmm. even. And take another little stitch A little stitch, there. and okay. then that's it. Now to applique it down, I use this wonderful silk thread. It's a hundred weight, and I use straw needles. Straw you can get, needles. My ten-year-old niece can do this. Okay. It is so <laughs> it, it just makes per it makes perfect little applique circles. It's, so, so it's a very fine thread. It's a very, very fine okay. thread. So you want to match the thread to the color of the whole cloth. The top. You want to match it to the piece that you're appliquing to the background fabric, not to the background fabric. I see. Not the whole cloth. So I'm going to take a stitch pretty much right behind where I came up. And I'm going to take a tiny little stitch and I'm going to catch just a couple of threads. And then I'm going to go in behind it again. Just right one little thread behind it. Has to be very secure. Very secure. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to come up again. And the little template is still in there. The little template is still in there. That's uh -huh. why you've got such a perfect circle. Oh. Because you're appliquing it down and it's perfectly circled. Okay. Now, after I've done all my stitches, uh -huh. I don't want to leave that file folder in there. No. <laughs> I think you've done that a couple of times. I have done we've that, and we've had, had to do little <laughs> repair jobs. So I've already appliqued these circles down. Uh -huh. So I'm going to take these little scissors. They have a little point, and I'm just going to... Just slit the back. I'm just going to slit the back. Now, do you have to sew that back up? No. <gasps> And you know what? I remember on one quilt we actually stuffed some trapunto. Before in there, we? we found the magic of machine trapunto, <laughs> this is the way we stuffed. This is the way we did trapunto. So these are little hemostats. So I'm going to reach in here and pull and just out pull the, out up ah, the file folder. And there you have a. And there circle. you have a perfect circle. That is. That, I just love that. I didn't know how it's you did that. It's very easy. That's great. It's quite easy. But I'll let you do that. <laughs> I'd rather be sewing on the long. And arm I would machines. rather you be sewing on the long arm <laughs> machines myself. Now everybody also um, is curious to know how you get the crystals on. Can you just briefly show us that? I can. It's very. It's also very. Everything I do okay. is very simple. Okay. <laughs> Let's just put this one up here. This is a small quilt of a larger one that we have done. The crystals are hot fix crystals. They uh -huh. already have the glue on the back. Oh, okay. And this is a little um, a little heat tool that's made specifically for the crystals. It looks like a curling iron. It does, doesn't <laughs> it? And it gets quite hot, but it does not get so hot that it's going to burn your fabric. It's thermostatted, oh, okay. so it will not burn your fabric. Okay. And these little tweezers are perfect. You're mm -hmm. just going to reach in and grab that crystal and you're just going to position it where you want it. And normally, I usually will follow your quilting line, so you do all the work for me. <laughs> and That's I'm just, okay with me. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just going to position that right down. I'm going to put my little tool right on top, and I'm going to let it sit there for 20, about 20 to 25 seconds. Oh, so they could take a while to do it. could take they? a while, but this is great TV work. And that's your job, not and mine. That's my job. And I love it. I love it. So and then after it sets, it's, it's on there. And you can throw these in the washer and the dryer. Oh, that's true. I know we've done that because done we have that. wearables too. We so, have wearables. Yeah. And we have a quilt terrific. that's actually been in the hot tub. In the hot tub. Yes, it in has. So, well, Sherry, thank you so much for, for being on this show. And especially thank you for the wonderful design work that you do that is so inspiring to me. It, it just couldn't be funner to be a partner with you in the creating these two person quilts. Thank you, Linda. I feel the same way. Thank you for having me on your show. You're welcome. Working with a partner can be one of the best, most rewarding experiences for a professional long-arm quilter.
This can go beyond the satisfaction of being hired and a job well done. There are specific reasons why partnering really works for me. It's inspiring to me to see and share in someone else's creative work and be trusted to contribute to their art. Whole is always greater than the parts. Together we can create things that neither of us want to do alone. Our skills grow together. Choosing a partner for quilting, like choosing a partner for anything, can be tricky. I found that there are some things that I can do with a potential partner that make for better collaboration. First of all, get to know each other and develop a good friendship. Communication is the key. Does the piecer have specific ideas about the quilting? Or are you allowed to put your art on their art and do what you dream? Talk about it and be clear about the expectations before it happens. Be prepared to compromise creatively if necessary. When it works, when you find someone you click with, it can work really, really well. Behind me are some of the awards that I've won working with my partners. It's gratifying to me that most quilt shows now have two-person categories. So pick a partner and start reaping the rewards of teamwork. I'm excited about this little project that Sherry Meineke Johnson pieced for me specifically to use on this show. But before I start on it, I want to show you something, a little trick that I do. When the pins come around the bar like this and they're sticking out here, I just take a piece of masking tape and put over those pins so that I don't get little pokes in my holes or in my fingers. On this little project, I have some applique, and I also have some beautiful blank area so that I can set some designs in here. Let's begin by putting a design in this area. I'm going to use the front laser light, and if I'm going to work on this side, then my, my template is going to rest over here. This is a quarter inch template made out of plexiglass and I have put the pattern underneath another piece of plexiglass. It's an eighth of an inch and this plexiglass is actually scored and you can take a razor blade and score that so that you have some diagonal lines and some square lines to help you line this up in your square. Our laser light has been moved to the front of the machine instead of the back now, and I've got it pointing down to this side. Now, when I use the laser light, I want it to be at the most direct angle I can. I don't want that light to be out too far at an angle, or the pattern will be distorted. So I want it directly down as, as uh, close to a, to a right angle as I can get it. Now, I'm going to come out and uh, I can see that I've set a pattern over here and I'm about an inch and a half from the corner. So I'm going to bring my machine foot out there where my needle would be and then I can move my pattern over there. And I, you have the luxury, you see, of moving both your laser light and your pattern to get this just where you want it. So there's the point. And I need to be about a quarter of an inch away from the side. So let's move this up. I can see that I need to tilt my pattern over here so that my light is on the side there, about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Now let's check the point down here. And that one can come down a little bit so that it's about probably more like a half an inch. So let's check this one again. Make sure very good, equal on both sides. We'll check our point here again. I can see I'm coming right out at a diagonal. And if I follow this diagonal up, I'm right in position. So I'll find a good starting place. Okay, I'm going to start right here at the point and go down and bring up my bobbin thread and take a few little stitches there to secure that thread. If you don't secure the thread when you take off, you'll have a bird's nest on the under, uh, underside when you're finished. Here we go. We're just going to follow our pattern around. And what you want to do is be very relaxed so that your lines are very smooth. And the pattern is easy for me to see. So it's clear out on the other side of the machine. So it's easy to follow. Very relaxed, almost a dance with the machine. 
and I'm using a polyester embroidery thread this time and that is uh, mounted on the machine. It's a little spool like you would use on your home machine. It's mounted on top of the machine so it comes off straight instead of coming off of the top of the spool. And again, as I get down to the end, I can look right down here where I started so I can, so not from behind the machine, but right here in front, I can see what I'm doing. Now, while I'm here, I'll go ahead and move this out of the way. And I'm going to do a stippling technique around this design. But the stippling technique that I'm going to do is an echo stipple. And it, you just make long worms. And I really like this one because it's very relaxing. It's a stressless stipple. So here's how you do it. Make long worms like this. And as you come back, you take little offshoots like that. And we'll go ahead and cut that thread, get that out of the way, and continue to echo what you have there. This kind of meandering or stipple is also very easy for you to keep consistent distance. So if everything I'm doing here is at least a quarter of an inch away, as I'm echoing, it's very easy for me to maintain that quarter inch. You won't get cornered if you know that there's some areas that you're just going to have to say, I won't get back to this area, like right in here. I will not get back to this area. So I need to stay in this area and fill it in while I'm in this area. There. Now we're out of that area. So I can continue here. And again, reach out with the worm, come back. You see how flowing it is? I'm staying very close to the design area with my first lines as I come around because, again, I want to raise up the motif. And if I don't stay close to that design, I will have defeated my purpose in the stippling. And so you continue like that. Now the reason I am using this contrasting neon orange embroidery thread is to actually change the color, at least from a distance, of the fabric around the motif. And you can see how that's happening. It actually changes the color around that motif. So try that neat stippling technique. I think you'll really find that you'll like it, and it's easy to do, but it will take you a few minutes to practice on that. Now we have um, some applique in the middle, and I want to show you what I do to go around that applique. First of all, I'm going to use a tool to help me. So I'm going to put on an extended base on my machine, and I just spring it underneath like that and push it over the plate. This gives me a nice flat surface. And long arm quilters have all kinds of these are round and square and rectangle, and they put them on there to help them with a nice flat surface there to use tools. This tool I call applique helper because it's going to help me go around this applique. I have to outline this applique, it's hand applique, and I have to stay not on the applique, but very close to it. If I get away from it at all, I'll have a little ridge of fabric that pushes up between that and the applique, and it doesn't look good. So once I get it like that, then I just put this right over the foot, and it hooks the foot like that. I turn it around. Then in my regulated mode, I can turn it on, and I can actually move it with my hands like this, with both hands. And I can see through that. I'll move one of those hands out of the way just so the camera can see how you stay right along the edge. I can see through the ruler. And so my left hand is able to help the right hand and either both hands down here. Now, if you do that in manual, many machines um, don't, don't have the regulated mode. So let's put it in manual. If you're going to do it in manual, then turn your speed down. It's OK to turn that speed down. So if I'm in manual, I'm going to go to constant speed like this and go very slow, just like that, and just stay right next to the applique, but not on the applique. Just 
just right next to it. Now if you're a little bit afraid of doing that, you might want to try that with the monofilament thread because the monofilament thread is clear and it won't show in case you miss that just a little bit. After you've gone around all of your designs with the, all of your applique, with your applique helper, then it's time to start putting some design work on there. And so let's look at this middle part. We have some beautiful circles here to work with. I think on this middle part, I would want to raise those circles up. So I can start right here. And I'll speed this up a little bit because I cancel a little faster here. Here we go. And I'm just following those around. Those little circles like that. And that's going to really, um, already I can see that this middle part is poofing up. I'll move that out of the way and cut the thread. So let's come around this way and do them this way. Just kind of come in on them like that. We are raising those circles up and emphasizing the fact that they are circles. Now we've gone all the way around that. Um, I like these circles on the outside too, so I want to do something with those. I think I'll come to the middle here, jump up and over, up and over, right on top of the applique. Oftentimes people think that they shouldn't sew on top of the applique, but I found that if you don't do uh, something on that applique, it just poofs out from the quilt and it looks funny. So it's a good idea to, if you have leaf work, then do some veins in those leaves. See how that's come alive already? And I could do more in there. I'd probably change the color to green and maybe um, do a lot of little stipple in there to, to uh, lower that down and make it look like the inside of a flower. I think we've almost turned it into a flower. Now on the outside, even though I'm going to have a wonderful design here, this is a time to do any design work out here that I want to do, and I think I'm going to put some points in here, because I have a lot of circles, and so I'm thinking contrast. So I'm going to come out here with some points, like this. Use my foot for my guide to come around and do points out here on each of these little areas in between the circles that. So you're actually making a new design area inside the design applique. And that's what you want to do when you're partnering with somebody, is you make their work come alive. And of course you couldn't do this if you'd already stippled the whole quilt because your area would be gone, all of your blank area would be gone. There we go. And maybe inside of this area, you'll want to do something. Um, I think I would do little swirls in here, right next to the applique. And that's going to be a real contrast to the echo stipple. You see those little swirls coming around? When I get over to the point here, I need to do something inside of that too. So I'm going to continue with the swirl down to here, and then inside of that little area, I'm going to go back and forth like this to fill it in. And I'll follow that back down. In fact, when I'm finished, I probably, because I love this orange, I love this neon color coming through, I'll go back um, on top of that very same stitching that I did this first time, and I'll probably do that two or three times. I'll just do this little area here so you can see how much that's going to stand out. You can go over it as many as five times if you like. Can you see how that just brightens up this whole project? It's just fantastic. Now we also have a border out here. And because it is a cute little border with little fireflies, I think, and I'm going to take the, the extended base off at this point. There we go. I don't want to do anything that's going to cover up those little fireflies, so I think I will just circle them and do a circle, a little loop in between the fireflies. So I just go around the firefly and do a loop like that with this beautiful neon thread. 
And that way, when I'm finished, my little fireflies will all stand out, but I'll have that cute little loop in there. I hope this has given you a good idea of some of the things that you can do when you have all this blank area. And what a wonderful thing. If you're a partner with somebody and they're the quilter or you're the piecer, give them something to, um, to create, something to use their imagination with. Let's look at this quilt finished. This one I did with the green neon thread and then I put, went back and put yellow on it to bring that center out. And then of course Sherry had to put her crystals on there because she is the crystal lady. She loves to have those beautiful little sparkly things everywhere. So hope this has given you some, some ideas. Use your imagination. Next time on Linda's Long Arm Quilting, we'll see how to make a wonderful wearable Chanel vest. Gina Perk joins us to share her techniques for beautiful wearables and quilts. And I'll tell you the best ways for professional quilters to work at home and still be professional. Remember, if I can do it, you can do it. See you next time. For more information, visit us on the web at www.lindaslongarmquilting.com. And we'll team up. Okay, <laughs> it's called Magic Carpet. Oh, I love Sorry, guys, that was nice, but I put down. Try to not be on. What? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. I know I did. <laughs> you told us not to get out of that. <laughs> you told us to stay in the box. Linda's long arm quilting is made possible by. Gamel Quilting Machine Company, bringing quality, innovation, and service to quilters around the world for over a quarter of a century. By YLI, making decorative threads that help you unleash your imagination. By Statler Stitcher, providing automation to enhance and expand your long arm quilting business. And by Hobbs Bonded Fibers.